Hi, my name is Sarah Lloyd, and I'm here uh, from the Wisconsin Food Hub Cooperative with my colleague, Tara Roberts-Turner, who is one of the founding farmers and the general manager of the co-op. And we just wanted to share with you today the things that we have learned uh, with the support of a USDA specialty crop block grant about building markets for vegetable seconds uh, in the wholesale market. So this is really geared towards farmers or folks that are thinking about these markets and what they need to know. So we're just gonna share what we've learned. Um, quick overview, the Wisconsin Food Hub Cooperative uh, is a farmer-led cooperative owned by the farmers and the Wisconsin Farmers Union. We sell over a hundred categories of fresh fruit and vegetables, both conventional and organic. And the co-op was founded really to just support farmers and so that they could do what they like to do, uh, which is grow vegetables. And the co-op would figure out the logistics and the sales and marketing. Um, for the farmers. Um, why is it important to have a seconds market? Well, uh, if you've grown things, you know that everything doesn't come out as a perfect product. And so uh, you need to find some additional revenue streams if you can sell your seconds at a good price. Uh, we estimate that when you're out harvesting for zucchini and yellow squash, you may have as much as 10% uh, seconds, cucumbers, 15%, bell peppers, 15%, winter squash, 15%. So we'll talk more about what it means uh, be, to be a second versus a grade one or first. Um, but, but first, I just want to talk about some of the wholesale outlets that we have been thinking about and trying to work with as we've tried to build these markets. So you have buyers that primarily sell to restaurants or food service. So those clients or buyers are gonna be using the product in their own kitchen or processing it in some way before they sell it to their end consumer. Um, you also have vegetable processors where that's all they do. Maybe they're dicing or cubing or mashing something or making like a soup or something like that that's gonna be sold. Uh, there are companies like Imperfect Produce or Misfits that are specifically using seconds as their selling point or a, a part of the selling point of their business. And then sometimes food pantries and food banks that are buying produce, they may be willing to purchase seconds to be able to get more product uh, out to their clients. Okay, I'm going to advance the slide. So, um, just to do a kind of crash course in what is a second, well, a second is not a first. <laughs> so usually when you think about it, um, produce is sold in, when you go to the grocery store and the highest value produce is a grade one, so USDA grade one produce. And it is governed by some more strict definitions about the size and the amount of uh, impact imperfectness it can have, the amount of blemishes it can have. Uh, and, and it's a, you know, a second is a perfectly healthy, edible, safe product. It just doesn't meet the grade one standard, which is usually like an aesthetic standard of what it looks like, the size of it. Um, but these are legal definitions for grade one. So if you want to investigate that, if you go to the Agricultural Marketing Service, the AMS USDA website, uh, you can look by vegetable and they outline, you know, what it takes to meet the grade one standard. But super important, whoever you're selling to, uh, whether you're going to sell them first or second, talk to them and talk to the buyers and about what is their expectation? What are their specifications? What do they expect a cucumber to look like and be packed like? Because that's going to be really key for you successfully selling to them. Um, and, you know, ask them if they have pictures. So here, for example, for our for seconds or imperfects, imperfect produce, which we have sold to over the years, gave us these great spec sheets where they really, um, you know, told us specifically what they're looking for. And they even put googly eyes on the uh, produce, but we don't do that. 
<laughs> uh, but I like those. <laughs> Um, and but I just want to show you, like, for example, the winter squash, you know, it's variant of color, uh, size, is there scarring, the shape, and I think the second and third pages, so here's the example from winter squash, you know, there can be some uh, weather caused uh, outside damage, um, there can be some issues with stems, but the third page that's on the right is really important. Seconds products are not moldy, rotten, they have not been frozen, they're not unsafe to eat. A second is a totally safe and healthy product. It just doesn't look, doesn't meet the aesthetic and size um, standard of grade one. Okay, so I'm going to turn things over to Tara Roberts Turner, who, as I said, is a farmer herself. Uh, and has worked as the general manager for many years now for the Food Hub. And she just kind of kind of go through some of the things that we bump into and that farmers can think about with these different crops, which we kind of think are the, from the Wisconsin context, kind of the, the main ones to think about. So take it away, Tara. All right, thanks a lot, Sarah. So we're gonna talk about seconds in a few different ways. The first that we're gonna talk about is the relationship that we have between retail and food service, which allows us to sell two grades or different inspection types of a product that helps us sell more of, of that item, whether it be a cucumber, pepper, squash, uh, or summer squash. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about processing and, um, Last but not least, um, we will talk a little bit about some special uh, markets for seconds through companies that specialize in seconds. So the largest amount of what I would call quasi seconds that we sell at the food office is through food service. So as Sarah talked about, the specs are really, really important. You still can't sell moldy or unedible product or it's going to get rejected at the dock. But by selling into retail and into food service, you can um, make sure that you hit your margins by having more of your product be sold versus sending it off the end of the conveyor belt or back out into the field. So if we talk about cucumbers, for instance, in the retail market, we sell what is called a super select. And this goes in a bushel box and it's a 72 count box. And those cucumbers are much smaller than food service cucumbers. They can't have any scratches, lines. They basically have to look perfect. And, you know, they're a pretty small cucumber, about, you know, four or five inches long. On the other hand, for food service, we have a 24 count uh, cucumber box, which is a little bit bigger than a half bushel. And those cucumbers are very, very long. We're talking, you know, eight inches sometimes on those cucumbers and a pretty big diameter. So most of our growers for the food hub that grow cucumbers will sort both at the same time. They will box both at the same time. They will put their super selects for retail, and then they will put their 24 counts for food service. And We'll talk about pricing in a little bit, but again, it allows them to have a really good return for their cucumbers versus sending them off the end of the conveyor belt. Peppers is the same thing. If we didn't have chopper peppers for food service, we wouldn't have retail peppers. There's not enough of a return on retail peppers, especially now that grocery stores are requiring um, items like cucumbers and peppers to be individually stickered, even for non-organic products. So, Chopper peppers are just what they sound like. They go to food service uh, and they're used for chopping. However, there are some things that food service companies don't like. Uh, they don't like their peppers to be a whole bunch of different sizes. So unlike the pictures that you saw for Imperfect, they don't want really, really tiny peppers thrown into the box. They need to be decent sized uh, peppers. They also don't like what they call suntan peppers, which means they have a red sunburn on the top of the pepper. Um, some food service companies will buy what are called sunburn peppers, but uh, from what we've seen at the Food Hub, that's very few and far between. So again, uh, you know, you can pack these at the same time. You can pack your retail peppers, sticker them, and then put your chopper peppers on the other side of the line and box those. 
let's talk a little bit about squash first summer squash um retailers tend to like zucchini much smaller again you know if we look at at the size of a retail zucchini versus the size of a food service zucchini there's a pretty big difference uh retailers you know you can get you know 40 45 zucchini in a box of the what they call um you know the the smaller fine zucchini versus food service where you're going to get more like 24 to 28 zucchini in a box and again uh you don't want any baseball bats sarah no playing ball with your zucchini um in e for either food service or retail um winter squash uh you know most when most winter squash goes retail there's very little purchasing of squash for food service however one big exception to the rule is butternut squash food service buys a lot of butternut squash as well as processors to make it into you know butternut ravioli butternut soup or any of those other butternut flavored products that you see uh, at the grocery store and in your restaurants um, typical difference though is that food service likes butternut squash to be the much larger varieties retail tends to like the very small varieties another thing that we have sold at the food hub are um, potatoes so potatoes in general for retail again they have to be perfect they've got to be uniform in size um, some are required to sticker them um, food service will pay not a great price but they'll pay a price for potatoes that would otherwise not hit the number one market and they call those unclassified um, or food service potatoes um, there's also most um, commercial potato growers that i know have contracts for you know different fry companies where they send their number two potatoes now one of the interesting things that we have talked about uh earlier is that there are other opportunities in the seconds market so kale is a perfect example we sold a lot of kale through the seconds market to specialty second box carriers so kale uh why would it be a second it would be a second if it had some sort of weather damage so it got hit by hail uh the leaves have imperfections to them not yellow coloring like it's bad but you know some sort of blemish from wind or hail damage and that kale is generally sold in bulk versus being bunched um and it can get a decent price and we'll talk a little bit about that in a second the other market that I wanted to mention are um, processors that are using fruits for juices. So we have sold a lot of strawberries and rhubarb to wineries, um, different sparkling drinks. Uh, and again, they don't mind if there's a variation in size or blemishes that you can sell it to them by the pound in bulk. And usually they'll pay a fairly decent price for that product. Great. Okay, so I'm going to try to see if I can wake my cursor up to move the slide. <laughs> okay, so now if you can tell us a little bit about kind of what we've seen in pricing, um, we set the parameters from 2019 to 2021 because that's the main part of this grant. And so obviously prices change every year a bit depending on kind of what the market, but this is generally kind of what we saw. So Tara, it'd be great if you want to kind of take us through this. Yeah, again, so keep in mind that most of these are sold hand in hand with each other. So, you know, you're getting a return from both the food service uh, sector as well as the retail. So cucumbers, somewhere between a nine and $13 for a 24 count cube for food service and around $22 for a super select in retail. Again, keep in mind that some retailers are now requiring stickering, which will increase your cost of labor. Uh, butternut squash um, in the food service um, sector will actually pay the same um, as retail in that 10 to $15 mark. But if you're selling second squash to 
uh, processor or to one of these specialty markets like we talked about, you're going to get 650 to 750. And these are both bushel boxes of squash. Again, remember that on the retail side, you're going to have to sticker your squash. And on the food service or processing side, you do not need to sticker your squash. Um, same thing for organic butternut uh, food service, or I should say processing 12 uh, food service and retail that's going to be um, put out whole in the 16 to $20 range of bushel. If we look at zucchini, this is interesting. Um, you would think that you would get more for retail since you're picking a much more vulnerable product, but actually you're only gonna get about 10 to $12 a box for a half bushel of zucchini um, through retail and food service will pay you 12 to 14. And again, you can be a little bit more lenient on your quality and your size with food service, which makes it nice. Peppers. <clears throat> Again, for retail, you got to usually sticker your peppers now. Uh, you might be asking, like, why, why are retailers requiring stickering now? Well, just really quick, a lot of retailers are requiring stickering now because they're having issues uh, when uh, the checkout personnel are checking out products, distinguishing between organic and conventional. So it used to be that organic was the only thing stickered, and now they're realizing that they're missing those stickers, so they want to sticker on everything. So uh, going back to peppers, retail, $15 to $20, that's for a bushel. And um, on the chopper pepper side of things in food service, $12 to $13 a bushel. Last but not least, if we look at a number one uh, 50 pound carton of potatoes, 17 to $20, uh, whereas your sack of 50 pound number two potatoes, only six to $8. But again, you're not throwing those potatoes away. So again, working hand in hand to meet that nice profit margin. Great. And then, you know, just some of the things to think about as a farmer in your own costs and kind of your flow of product. So Tara, if you can kind of share some things that folks should keep in mind. Absolutely. So anytime you think about whether you're going to grow a crop for wholesale production, again, you're going to want to consider whether you're growing a crop that you're going to sell to retail and to food service. Think about whether you're gonna be packing those together, the amount of labor that you're gonna need for packing. Um, how much money are you gonna need for harvesting, for uh, packaging? Do you need separate packaging for food service versus retail? Um, and then always you wanna consider your transport costs and how many cases you can have on a pallet and what is that going to take off your, your profit margin? Um, the other thing you want to consider if you're selling into a specialty market, so let's say you're selling to a processor and you're on a contract, or you're selling into one of these um, second markets for that sell by the box, those buyers are going to want the product consistently. So for instance, when we were selling kale uh, throughout the kale season to one of these box programs, Sometimes we had to send number one kale in just to fill the order if we didn't have the number two kale. Um, because again, if we don't fill that order, it opens the door to another buyer and we lose those orders. So most of those buyers and those specialty products, they want you to fill that order all season. They want you to be consistent. And again, you might end up having to put in some number ones if you, if you don't have enough number twos. So just always consider that when you're considering signing up for one of those programs or a processing contract. Yeah, and you know, we had some, you know, we moved around over the years and who were selling seconds to and the food service and, you know, as companies change hands or get bought by other people that, that you see a lot in this space, you know, we've seen things shift a lot. So, so that's something to keep in mind too, as you're, as you're thinking about how you're planning for what, how to take advantage of these opportunities about what some of the risks are. Absolutely. Um, 
Yeah, and you know, so this, we really appreciate that the USDA Specialty Crop Black Grant, you know, provided resources so that we could try to figure out how to best maneuver in these markets. Uh, we're happy to share more information with folks. Uh, we put this video together to, to get the word out. Um, and but but definitely get in touch if if this is something that you would help your business in getting more information. So so thanks thanks Tara. Thank you.